Woo -hoo -hoo, we're streaming. No, I say streaming, not live streaming. I want to make that clear. But I'm going to try to stream all day today. Number of hours, hopefully maybe eight or more. Uh, we'll see how things go. I hope that you uh, enjoy it. It's going to be a little different than what I normally do because normally I, you know, if I'm on camera at least, I edit it. You know, most of my videos are screen casts. Uh, but when I edit, when I film with a camera, I tend to edit out stuff and just get to the point. Uh, so you might see me fumble around a bit today. But hopefully you'll stick around for a while. I hope that you'll uh, find at least some of what I do today entertaining. We're just going to go through a day of, you know, stuff I do on average. Um, most of it will be tech related, but, uh, you know, part of it will just be me talking about different things, uh, tech related and else other things, you know, might be me, um, mumbling and bumbling like I am right now. <laughs> uh, but I'll probably do some silly things for you. If you stick around, I might even dance for you. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, something I got to work on today is, uh, my water pump. I'm on well water and there's a little project with an ESP8266 chip that I, uh, hope to get done today. It's something I've been meaning to do for months, but, um, since the last problem I had, uh, but currently, uh, I was having another issue this morning where my, uh, aerator tank was overflowing because the pump in the ground wasn't turning off, which is bad because those pumps are expensive. I just replaced it a couple months ago because it was running and running and, and broke the pump. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's like a thousand dollars to replace. I mean, the pump itself is six or seven hundred dollars easy, probably more, uh, plus labor for someone to come and install it. Uh, but uh, we're going to, you know, monitor it with an ESP8266. Hopefully, I have it all thought out in my head. I have the code written out. Uh, I just need to test it out, and you're here with me today to do that. I do thank you for that. Um, so again, it's just going to be me today with you, talking for a while. <laughs> you can come, you can go, you can chat, you can comment. I'll probably uh, release at least some of these clips, if not all of them, you know, for people to view later on. But uh, I don't do streams very often. Um, but I thought I'd see how it goes, see, you know, what you guys think. Uh, again, I've been cutting back a lot on my uh, videos uh, recently. You may have noticed, I've mentioned it, um, which is fine because uh, one of the reasons I'm coming back is just... Um, putting forth the time to make videos, you know, it takes a lot of time, uh, not just recording them. Recording them is actually pretty easy, but, uh, you know, I got to learn the stuff. I got to test the stuff. I got to think about how I'm going to explain it. And, uh, you know, it takes time. And I actually recently did a video letting you guys know, you know, like with my YouTube, uh, AdSense, which is where most of my income comes from, uh, as far as not most of my income, but my for my videos, that is, uh, you know, I still have my full-time job as a firefighter, which I might talk about a little bit today, maybe some of the technology that we have. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> See, streaming, that's, that's what happens. I, I lose my train of thought, but, uh, I was talking about, um, wow, I'm getting old when I can't remember what I was talking about two seconds ago, talking about, uh, oh, Ad income. So yeah, I got my Patreons, which you guys are awesome. You know, uh, I, I make some money there. Not a whole lot. I appreciate every supporter I have there. Uh, but majority of my income for my videos, not my income total. I don't make very much doing videos, uh, which is the point of my other, one of the points of my other video. Um, it's kind of up and down. And, uh, the whole point of me making that video was kind of showing you how that is, and hopefully I was hoping to get a little more stay and maybe get some more supporters. I understand that everyone could support, but some of the comments were like, yeah, you can't depend on on uh, YouTube ads for constant revenue. I go, yet yeah, I'm thinking that's my point. My point of talking to you was to get you to support so that I do know I can project out what's what the income's going to come, and, and and that way I can decide whether... I, it's worth putting more effort into the videos, you know, with the AdSense, it's not worth it. Anyway, I don't want to go on and on about that. I just wanted to bring that up because I find it funny that people didn't really get the point of the videos. I was kind of nicely asking for more supporter support, viewer support, I should say. Anyway, uh, other things we're going to look at, uh, you know, here shortly, I'm going to show you my website. I'm sure a lot of you have been to my website, hopefully, filmstarchris.com, Chris the K, there's a link in the description, I say at the end of every video, it's there. It's a very easy way to search through all my videos, um, and uh, again, I'll show you it here in a moment, uh, but I'm also going to show you a few months ago, I added some functionality, if you are a Shell user, uh, where if you don't want to use a GUI interface to interact with my website, you can use 
uh, a text-based um, web browser such as Lynx or uh, was it uh, W3M or even WGET and it functions differently if you're using WGET or curl and you can search through my videos easily that way so we're gonna be going over that um, what else might I talk about today? Again, I'm going to be talking about a lot of things. Um, at points, I'll probably just take a break from sitting here and go outside and uh, you know lay in my hammock, which is my thought place. And you know we're getting into the hotter season here in Florida, so I won't be able to lay, lay in it much in the coming months. Uh, but the weather's still uh, decent right now, and um, and I like to lay out there and think. And I've done some videos talking to you guys, just talking about stuff. Uh, so it's going to be like a change up, not just tutorials. I'll do some some functional stuff here, but a lot of it's just going to be me talking to you guys as well. Um, again, we're going to be looking at the ESP8266 chip, uh, which might be a disaster because I'm doing a project, uh, which I thought out and wrote the code for, and I've done a test, but I haven't actually hooked it up to the system I'm going to hook it up to. And I'm going to do that for you guys, and uh, hopefully it works. And hopefully it's not just a whole bunch of me fumbling around. If it is, please put up with me for a bit. Um, later on, I might get together with Ember and on her computer uh, and have her show you some stuff because you guys seem to like last time she did a video. We'll see how she does uh, live. Um, and, oh, and of course, almost every day I play some, some Doom. So maybe at some point I'll just play some Doom. <laughs> just because. And yeah, I... Uh, Pretty much every night after the kids go to sleep, uh, have about an hour. My wife does her stuff. She showers and stuff like that. And and then we, we get together to watch TV after that. But I have like an hour and lots of times I spend that hour relaxing and I use part of that to play a level or two of Doom. Original Doom. Uh, original Doom and Doom 2. And uh, speaking of Doom, so this is a 3D print a buddy made of mine. Uh, made of mine. A 3D print a buddy of mine made. It just says Doom. It's supposed to be a keychain, although it's the hole's not big enough. He said it was originally a bigger thing. He shrunk it down to the keychain size, so just because he had a 3D printer, wanted to play around, and he knew I liked Doom. He's way too young to remember Doom. Um, I think he was probably born around the same time Doom came out. Um, so, uh, also with this live, this the streaming, you might hear my kids and stuff because this is going throughout the day. So my family's doing stuff. I'm going to be doing stuff. I might have to stop and walk away from the camera for a bit. And just leave things. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, I'll play some Doom. Uh, and as I was saying, I play Doom all the time. But even before Doom was open source, and I've said this before, because the, the original Doom code is released under a GPL license, um, the code itself that is, uh, even before that, it was a very moddable game, which I'm not much of a gamer at all, really. Uh, I, in fact, can't stand most gamers. I think they're like the lowest level <laughs> of computer users in general. I'm generalizing. I don't want to insult people. But, uh, you know, a lot of gamers are all about the games and, and getting the big rig, you know, and um, they, don't, they don't really know that much about computers. They just know what graphic cards are good. And but people turn to them for help, and they really don't know anything about software other than how to install these games. Um, so if I just insulted you, great. Um... But uh, yeah, the uh, what I was saying, you see I get sidetracked a lot. Uh, I play Doom all the time, and even before it was open source, there were tools that you can modify pretty much every aspect of the game. You could create levels, change the artwork, sound, all that stuff, and you know, modify the WAD files, which contained all that, that stuff. Uh, and then there was also, back in the day, before the source code was available, uh, Dehacked, I think it was called. I haven't used it in 20 years, uh, but sometimes when you get the mods, they have those uh, DEH files, and that actually changes. You can actually create whole new um, uh, characters, uh, you know, objects for the game, or modify how they work without actually getting into the source code. Nowadays, you can get in the source code and change it, and it's probably easier if you, you know, know a little bit of coding. Um, but there, it was so malleable. You could change that game so much, even before it was open source. You could change pretty much every aspect of it. It was amazing that over the last, you know, it's, you know, 25 years now, Doom's been around. Um, there's just so many mods out there that I play almost every night, or at least a few nights a week, and I haven't had to repeat. And right now I'm just doing basic uh, level mods that might have new sounds and some some new artwork. Uh, but uh, there's actually a YouTube channel, uh, the Doom. What's he called? The Doom Game Mod. Let me look up. Let me look, let me look it up. Let me look it up. I'm, I actually subscribe to him. 
Uh, mod, mod Madness. Doom Mod Madness uh, is what his videos are called. Let's see. Oh, that's my, my videos. I want to go to my subscription feeds. Go through here till I see one of his videos. And he puts out a few videos a week. Here we go. Uh, Icarus. Icarus Live. Icarus Lives, but his uh, Lives is L-I-V-3-S. And he does these videos, sometimes live streams, uh, called Doom Mod Madness. And he plays these mods that are that are completely new games. And uh, I've seen examples of uh, him playing like Donkey Kong uh, Country, where someone completely mod Doom to run like Donkey Kong Country. And it looked like Donkey Kong Country. He said it handled horribly. But it's just amazing how many different mods. And I haven't even gotten to that aspect of the game because I haven't had to because I'm still playing just new levels that people create. And I can do that a few nights a week and still I haven't gotten through the list from one website yet. And um, so again, this is just me talking. <laughs> For those of you who aren't joining or just joining, I'm going to try to be streaming all day today. We'll see how that goes. And a lot of it's just going to be me talking and babbling and stuff like that. Probably boring stuff, maybe some interesting stuff. But <coughs> me coughing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but Doom has been my favorite game before, you know, since the 90s. Before I knew, I knew what Linux was, but I didn't, never had used it. Didn't care about free or open source software. And it's so great that my favorite game from back then uh, has been open sourced under the GPL license. And uh, that, that doesn't mean that the game is completely, you know, that developers can't still make money. You can still buy Doom because the artwork uh, and the levels and the sounds are all still copyrighted and, and proprietary. Um, but the code itself, which is the most important part, if you ask me, there's different views on that. And But for me, uh, there's a difference between code and artwork uh, where there's the functionality of something and the looks and aesthetics of something. I think it's great when they're both free, you know, art under a Creative Commons that's compatible with the GPL. I think you can actually release art under uh, the GPL license. I want to say the original artwork of Tux, the Penguin, is under a GPL license. Let me see if I can look that up real quick. Uh, Tux Art GPL. I don't know. Uh, now some Creative Commons, but that's not the original. I want to say I read somewhere that the original, you know, the iconic Tux artwork. Um, type in Tux Art, it just brings up Tux Paint. Tux Linux, maybe Tux Linux. Wikipedia, Wiki. Uh, computing. Tux mascot, GPL, sign file or sue patterns for Tux. Oh, okay, so I was talking about files here. Yeah, art files of Tux the penguin are under the GPL. Uh, GPL, oh, license, art, no, that's the article. Tux mascot, which is licensed under Creative Commons. But not on, okay, so the article incorporates material from the synthesized um, article Tux Mascot, which is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license, not supported under the GFDL, okay, which is the, the GNU Free Document License. Anyway, let me get back to what I was saying. So I think you can release artwork under a GPL license, but some of the Creative Commons, not all, some of the Creative Commons licenses are GPL compatible. Um, and that's great. Uh, personally, as for when it comes to art and music and stuff like that, I think any of the Creative Commons licenses are great. People can disagree. Um, but I think that when it comes to art, music, pictures, videos, you know, all that sort of stuff, uh, the importance is that people can use it and not get in trouble. I mean, I live, I live in America, and here we, we have the freedom of speech, and I think it's ridiculous that we put restrictions on what we can hear and see, uh, because they're copyrighted. Uh, for, for personal use, I don't think there should be really any restrictions. I can understand commercial use uh, when it comes to art stuff. When it comes to software, now we're talking about functionality, and, and that's a big problem when, you know, we got, we got, you know, it's kind of like the difference between, between 
uh, copyrights and patents. It's, software is functionality. It's how something works, and it should be completely free, in my opinion. Artwork, uh, you know, I would love to see it completely free, but obviously there's there's different views on that, and, and whatever. Not going to get into that too much. But it, I, I would just love to see, you know, going off on a little bit of a rant here about video games or software in general, but it's like, how do video game programmers make money if you if you release your software under a free and open license like the GPL? I, you know, a big part of the games are the, the art, the levels, the sound, the music. You can release your code, and at least that way people can make improvements to it. People can port it to other systems, and it doesn't even cost the company's money. Uh, the, uh, Quake 1, Quake 2, one of them, I think it was Quake 1, the source code was actually leaked at one point before it was ported to Linux, and people in the community, I believe, ported it to Linux before it was officially ported, and then when they decided to port it, they used a majority of the code that the community already created from that leaked code, uh, which now, you know, Quake 1, 2, and 3 are all under a GPL license, which is great, but that just goes to show if you share the source code, you know, it's it's how much money do companies put into porting where the community would do it. I want that game on Linux. I am going to port it, you know, um, but that doesn't mean that the game is free because the artwork still is. And yeah, there are projects like when it comes to the original Doom, as I said, the, the source code is under a GPL license, but the artwork is still proprietary. Well, uh, there is the free Doom uh, project, which the goal of that was to replace all the art, you know, all the sound, all the levels, all the music, uh, with free art, music, sound, all that stuff, so you have a completely free game. And it's great, but when it comes to a game, a lot of it, again, is art, which is a different opinion. You can have two games, just like Original Doom and Free Doom. I much still prefer, they're both great. If, if Free Doom was all I had, that would be awesome, but the feel, I don't know, some of it's nostalgia, but the artwork and stuff, I, I just like the original Doom better. And that's still proprietary artwork. Luckily, I still own, you know, all the original CDs from the 90s for Doom 1, 2, and Final Doom. Uh, Ultimate Doom is actually the copy I have of the first one. Um, so you can release the source code, and all it's going to do, again, with any software development company, releasing the source code is just going to help you because it's going to get you help from the community. You, you're, you're basically getting free workers if people are interested in your project at all. And people can't legally just copy your game if it has all the art stuff in there. And again, comment below if you feel different than me. I completely understand. Uh, but to me, that's, that's... I don't see why all games, at least, aren't free and open source. Because uh, people still, you go, oh, well, people will copy it. Well, people will copy it now. You know, uh, oh, well, you get around DRM. DRM sucks. I mean, you watch any history of DRM. All it does is slow people down and usually makes things harder for the end user, not the people who are pirating it. Pirating it. I hate that term, by the way. Uh, to me, pirating, and this is my own opinion, pirating, uh, besides people sailing in ships, are people who make a copy, a bootleg copy of something, like they go to the movie theater and record, and then they sell it. I don't consider it pirating if you're just sharing it. It's called sharing, not pirating. Anyway. Going back to that, which actually I saw uh, Richard Stallman live once at a conference, and he talked about that. He goes, he goes. People ask me what I think about pirating. He said, I don't think that people should shoot cannonballs at other ships or something like that. Uh, obviously, in jest. Um, anyway, uh, another example. Uh, I knew someone years ago. This girl, uh, she was a photographer and very big into the Apple scene, and she spent months working with developers to create her own little uh, makeup app. Uh, so the way this worked was, uh, it was for iOS. You go in there, you you would pick the uh, color of your, you know, skin tone and all that stuff and the colors you like or whatever like that. And then it would give you pictures of a model with different eyes, uh, eye makeup and lip makeup. And you'd be able to swipe parts of their face, their eyes and their mouth uh, to get, see what different looks like and decide what you want. Great idea, you know proprietary. Uh, I think it ended up, she didn't, she, it was like a couple of dollars and that gave you support online from her. She can ask her questions and stuff like that. I don't think she did very well. I think she was very disappointed in the end project. She put a lot of time and money into that. Well, if she open sourced it, she could have gotten more help. And the truth is that particular program would have been pretty useless without all her photos that she took. She took all these photos and lined them all up. So she could release that under a GPL license and then, um, 
you know, still had uh, preferably like a Creative Commons, I, I would say, she, make it proprietary, proprietary photos. You couldn't copy this at all. Uh, personally, I don't like that. I like to see, again, personal use of art and stuff. Fine, I can understand restrictions on commercial. Uh, but that even if she released it under a creative Creative Commons uh, commercial license, um, the uh, you know no one's going to go through the effort of of rebranding it because they can't do that without replacing all the the, the photos. The the important part is the source code. We can improve on it, make it better, and then you can you know add functionality to your application again if it's popular. If people really don't care, no one's going to add to it. If people don't care, no one's buying it anyway. Uh, but yeah, she could have very easily open sourced that. Um, and it could have been ported to Android as well. You know, someone might have said, hey, I like that, I'm going to port it. And then she would have a copy of that. And she can use her artwork in there. Anyway, I'm babbling a bit. Um, there is some things that I'm not clear on, you know, and I'm not a lawyer when it comes to licensing, and I have tried to get answers uh, from uh, the Free Software Foundation, and that is when you create a program under the GPL, you can use non-free artwork in it, they say, as long as it's not um, necessary for the program to run. And I think they usually they give an example of like a button, you know, if the button is proprietary artwork and the program won't work without that button, you can't do that. Which is very confusing because in really any program, there is no artwork you can't replace, so I don't see that. But one of my confusions is, again, going back to Doom. Doom is GPL, but all the artwork and stuff is, is proprietary. But obviously that's allowed to be GPL. Why are they allowed to keep their artwork, you know, I, I'm again, you can say, well, you can replace all the artwork, but you can always do that. So I've actually talked to people at conferences who previously worked at the Free Software Foundation. I've talked, I've contacted the Free Software Sound Foundation. And the problem is they are very defensive. Um, see, the reason I was asking is because I might, I like to make games every once in a while. And I want to release them under the GPL. And I can do some of my own artwork, but it's nice to be able to use artwork that is under a Creative Commons license that may or may not be GPL compatible. Does that mean that I can't use that artwork in there? And they always think when people are asking like this, they get a lot of people from I've been told by people who have worked for the Free Software Foundation who contact them who are trying to circumvent the GPL. They're trying to find loopholes and they're actually contacting the Free, the, the free Software Foundation to say, hey, how do I get around this? Can I get around this to where I can lock it up? And of course they don't like that. And that's not what I was trying to do at all. I was trying to get clarification. Am I allowed to use these proprietary, or not proprietary, but you know, non-compatible uh, images in my game, like a, a spaceship that's under a Creative Commons uh, that has some restrictions on it that are GPL compatible? Am I violating the GPL? Um, and there, and I gave Doom as an example. I said, how can Doom be GPL if all the artwork and stuff is proprietary? Obviously, you can replace it, but you can do that with any artwork in any project, and they never really gave me a clear answer. Um, but I guess as long as maybe if it's not embed, obviously if you would embed the images, like convert it to a base 64, I guess, and embed it in the code, uh, obviously that would be an example where it's actually part of the code and would have to be GPL compatible. But if it's a separate file that the code calls, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able, as far as I can see, uh, use proprietary images and music, but keep the code open source and free. Anyway, so we're at, you know, almost, you know, 25 minutes or so, half an hour into this little stream here. I hope you all are still with me and, and that I'm not boring you too much. Uh, but uh, we're going to actually start looking at my computer here momentarily, and we're going to um, look at my website. Actually, let me start bringing that up. Films by Chris.com. Load this up. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch over to this.